Welcome to another taste of our top 10 autos. In past weeks, we've looked at all categories of cars, but until now, we've avoided the obvious. Family cars. That's right, eh, Ginny? Yes, but in case you think cuddly, sensible family cars doesn't fit in with the macho men and motors image, remember that most of you, if not already, will need cars like that eventually. So listen up. As always, we start at the bottom. So, what car is number 10 of our family car stars? At number 10 is the Volvo S40 and its estate brother, the V40. Now, when these were launched back in 97, they didn't exactly excite in the refinement or the handling department. What they did offer, though, was a manageable choice from the Volvo range after their previous slab-sized offerings. In the summer of 2000, they revised the S and the V40 to make the cars look more purposeful and to make the ride more fun. Fun? Mm, I don't think that word would appeal to the average Volvo devotee. High levels of safety. Now you're talking. Volvo's S40 and V40 look great and make competent family cars, but not when you compare like for like with the rivals in this highly competitive sector. At number nine, the Honda Accord. But if we took the Honda badge away, would you still recognize the make? The bland styling is a shame because the drab curbs cover what is a very competent machine. If the last time you looked at the Accord to buy was say three or four years ago, then check the new model out because huge improvements have been made. Honda have tweaked the chassis to suit the tastes of European motorists. You see, the Americans tend to like their ride pretty soft, and the Japanese hard, apparently. We in Europe, though, are happiest on the firm side, but with decent suppleness for our twisty roads. Under the bonnet is an all VTEC range of engines which are excellent from the 1.8 litre up to the 2.2 which offers 209 brake horsepower. So the Honda Accord is better than before if you still forgive the wishy-washy looks. That's why in the panel's view we have to vote it number 9. But there are better cars in this class to come. Number eight, we welcome the Nissan Primera. Another non-looker, to be honest. Admittedly, the styling has improved since the car first appeared, but people buy this not for how it looks, but for how it handles. The Primera 
has enormous driving appeal with well-weighted communicative steering, excellent ride and handling and plenty of enjoyment around those country curves. The latest version of the Nissan Primera was designed, developed and constructed in Europe for us Europeans. So that should mute any cries of a car made for Japan and the States merely adapted for our needs. We like the latest Nissan Primera a lot, but not as much as the ones in the rest of our countdown. The ride and handling for which the outgoing Primera was rightly praised is more or less retained because essentially this car is a facelift, it's built on the same chassis. That means that the steering is very, very direct, there's little or no body roll, even on quite fast corners, and it really is a delight to drive. Number seven, and we welcome to our top ten, the British-built Toyota Avensis. From the wilds of Derbyshire comes a car which has behind it a legacy of well-loved, reliable and practical transport. Well-loved? Yes, by cabbies who knew you could saw them in half and still they wouldn't break down, but family? Toyotas were too small and tinny. Where being the operative word, the Avensis was designed to take flair and appeal up a notch and we think they've succeeded to a point. Sure, there seems to be space inside now, unlike the Carinas of old. While the Avensis is two inches shorter than the Carina it replaced, it's been designed with a longer wheelbase, which gives more cabin room. Recently, the Avensis has been given a freshen up with better quality plastics, new light clusters, plus a revised suspension. The Toyota Avensis isn't a bad car at all and can be excellent value, plus buying it supports good old British workers. At number six, the unloved Vauxhall Vectra. Now, how can a car we call unloved sell so well? Well, the media in general has been Vectra bashing ever since the Cavalier-shaped car came off the assembly line. And this programme panel agrees. The Vectra's shape and styling is way too conservative. There's no flair or sparkle outside or in. Once more, they've recently updated the Vectra, but did they take the opportunity to weave a little magic in? Did they echo like? The thing about the Vectra, though, is where it is bland to hold, it makes up for in so many areas. A great engine choice, roomy interior, a solid construction, they're all plus points. So are the steering, and its feedback has been improved dramatically since Mark 1. Plus you can find nearly new, or even new prices, fantastically low if you look around. The Vectra has been, and still is, a big fleet seller, so it must be doing something right. But for our top ten panel, there are still five cars better than it.
Straight in at number five is the astonishing Renault Laguna. Remember Mark 1 and all those daft ads with clocks saying it was about time? Unfortunately, the ads were far more memorable than the car, but this all new Laguna is now getting serious. Yes, that's right. In the same way that some years ago VW hired a notch in the whole family car market with a new Passat, this Laguna is now refined, solid and very well designed. For a French car, are we saying? Well, France's car manufacturers have really improved their act over the last 10 years or so, yet their styling still tends to be, well, French. So if you'd like to drive something looking striking, comfortable and uh, French, the Laguna is for you. On the gadget list is the Cart Renault. Keep it in your pocket and the doors unlock when you work the door handle. Stick it in the slot in the dash, push the button and hey presto. On the move, you have the choice of propulsion from two diesels, two four-cylinder petrols and a silky smooth three-litre V6. These excellent motors, the endless onboard gear and gizmos and the distinctive styling go a long way for the Renault Laguna, but not quite enough to go higher than number five because there are still four cars in our top ten better. Find out which they are after the break. Hello and welcome back to the top 10 family cars as voted for by the Men and Motors panel with me, Jimmy Buckland. And me, Dave Lee Travis. So far we've had the Volvo S and V40, the Honda Accord, Nissan Primera, Toyota Avensis, Vauxhall Vectra and the Renault Laguna. So without further ado, let's hit the top five. At number four, another French car, the seductive curves of the Peugeot 406. Far less fussy design than the Laguna, this elegant saloon and practical estate has sold very well in the UK. This is the car that's replaced the much-loved 405. There's plenty of space for the passengers with nice comfy seats, and the cabin was one area spruced up in the revamp of 1999, but sadly, the plastic still looks shiny and cheap. When you get behind the wheel and enjoy sure-footed handling and a serene ride, you realise the chassis of the 406 is absolutely brilliant. The engine choice is also good, but avoid the base diesel if you want to get anywhere fast. We like the 406, especially the estate and in the gorgeous Pininfarina style coupe form. But for this category of cars, we still think there's better. So bring on our number three. It's the VW Passat. When first launched, this car was absolutely astonishing because it offered executive car quality and styling for the price of a family car. Well, this really must have upset their cousins at Audi. Well, Jimmy, it did, but they moved up quality a peg and so did everyone else when the once boring Passat transformed itself into an object of desire. They really should have changed the name, but VW have never been hot on names for the UK market. Hmm, I see what you mean. Passat? Passé. Yes, 
and Bora, boring. And even Sharam, Sharon. Hey, I've got a good friend called Sharon. But you wouldn't name a car after her now, would you? But like a good friend, the Passat is dependable and you get the feeling that they'll be around for a very long time. The engine range starts at the 1.8 litre 20 valve, topping out at a 2.8 V6. If you do mild off-roading, check out the four-wheel drive version. The VW Passat has recently been revised to offer even more refinement and onboard kit. But good as it is, there are still two more cars in this class which our panel believes beat it. At number two, the Alfa Romeo 156. Alfa, a family car? Yes, and why not? This Italian mark came up with a practical, well-made car which is stylish and a hoot to drive. Now, the 156 won the European Car of the Year back in 1997. But why is it still so highly regarded? Well, it's because it's an enthusiastic driver's car. We can get behind the wheel and enjoy the experience that really is remarkable for its size and its low cost. It really does do credit to Alfa's sporting heritage. Excellent road manners, fingertip steering, responsive throttle and driving dynamics that take bad bends well into its stride. With 120 brake horsepower to keep you entertained and a top speed of 142 miles an hour to amuse you, this car is absolutely packed with fun. Now the six-speed gearbox is as smooth as silk and the roar that you get from that V6 will really send you into raptures. Now you can feel the power from the engine the moment that your foot hits the accelerator. It goes like a rocket. But it's once you get to 4,000 revs that this engine really begins to sing. We really enjoy driving the 156. It is a fantastic driver's car. In fact, I sometimes think of it as a refined go-kart. But the 156 isn't a stripped-out performance car. Oh no, it comes laden with everything that a car in this class demands. There are new versions of the 156, such as the one with the Formula One-inspired gearbox, controlled by buttons on the steering wheel. One moves the car up a gear, the other shifts it down again. We love this car, but our panel has chosen yet another car to be at number one. So, before the unveiling, let's count down the top ten so far. Number 10, the Volvo S and V40. At number 9, the Honda Accord. In at number 8 is the Nissan Primera. At number 7, we've got the Toyota Avensis. Number 6 is the Vauxhall Vectra. Our number 5 is the Renault Laguna. And our number 4, the Peugeot 406. Our number three is the Passat from VW. Finally, our number two is the Alpha 156. Ford say this is their first virtual reality car. It's a car that was designed and built without ever leaving the engineers' computer screens. And Ford say that saved them a fantastic amount of time and money in technical drawings and modelling of the new car. So to our number one. Yes, yet another award for Ford and their team, who've made a great car even better. The Mondeo was originally conceived as a world car for a world market. If it's a world car, then why didn't they call it Mondeo in America? It's called a Contour over there. Because market research showed 
that the Americans would rhyme it with rodeo and call it a, a mondio. But forget the name. Let's celebrate this magnificent machine that offers such good value for money to today's family motorist. From the interior, you can tell that a few of the Passat's designers had defected to the blue oval. Even the steering wheel and seat shapes look spookily similar. There's much more quality than before, yet everything is placed where it should be for ease of driving. The layout is clear and crisp. There's even more cabin space than before. Maybe because Ford don't have a larger passenger car in the range now, the Scorpio is gone, and it's all very luxurious. But on the road is where you'll notice the most differences to the Ford Mondeo. Crisp, responsive controls and an easy-to-use slick gear change could have easily come straight from the Alpha 156, which is really saying something. OK, this car may not hold its value as well as a prestige mark, but look at what you get for the windscreen price, and you certainly won't be complaining. If we had a niggle about the Ford, it's still quite noisy at cruising speeds, but at least there are good built-in stereos to entertain you. In the choice of engines, the 2-litre petrol is the one to go for. Don't buy the models with ancient oil burners under the bonnet. Wait till the next generation of Ford diesels hit the market soon. So it's congratulations to Ford for producing yet another benchmark car. The Mondeo, number one in our top ten of family cars. Make sure you join us next week on Top 10 Autos because we'll be showing you our panel's choice of the Top 10 Multi-Purpose Vehicles, better known as MPVs.